The concept of the grand architect of the cosmos is a profound and encompassing notion of the divine, embraced across a spectrum of spiritual and philosophical traditions. It portrays God as the ultimate creator and organizer of the universe, a theme prevalent in Christian scholarly and religious circles. In Freemasonry, the term symbolizes a supreme divine entity, maintaining neutrality and accommodating the diverse spiritual perspectives of its members. Freemasons are encouraged to interpret this concept in line with their personal beliefs. Similarly, in Rosicrucianism, a significant spiritual and cultural movement, Max Heindel's interpretation highlights God as a fundamental creative force, integral to their mystical and philosophical teachings. Masonic historians such as William Bissey, Gary Lisa, and S. Brent Morris have explored the term's significance in Freemasonry, where it represents a long-standing tradition of allegorically naming God, Reverend James Anderson's Book of Constitutions from 1723 is credited with introducing this term to Masonry, likely inspired by John Calvin's theological writings. Christopher Hafner's work further elucidates the Masonic understanding of this term as a universal symbol adaptable to various belief systems. This interpretation is demonstrated in a Masonic Lodge setting, where individuals from different faiths unite in prayer, each perceiving the deity in their own way. The term's application varies across Masonic rites. For instance, the Swedish rite, requiring a declaration of Christian faith, refers to the divine as the triune grand architect of the cosmos, illustrating the term's inclusivity within Masonic practice. In Gnostic belief, the grand architect of the cosmos is associated with the Demiurge, a creator distinct from the monotheistic God. The Demiurge, sometimes identified with the Old Testament God, contrasts with divine figures such as Christ and Sophia in Gnostic theology. The Demiurge's nature and creations are viewed as derivatives of another entity and vary across Gnostic systems. Gnostic interpretations of the Demiurge range from malevolent to uninformed or misguided, reflecting the physical universe's perceived flaws. The term also transcends traditional religious boundaries, symbolizing the innate divine potential within each individual and representing a universal power recognized by various names across different cultures. In Hindu mythology, Lord Vishwakarma, revered as the deity of architecture, embodies this creative force. His architectural feats in various yugas as detailed in Hindu scriptures, exemplify his significant role in the cosmic order. Max Heindel's Rosicrucian teachings in The Rosicrucian Cosmo Conception present the great architect as the supreme being emanating from the absolute at the beginning of creation. This view aligns with the broader spiritual understanding of the term Christianity, too, has frequently employed the imagery of God as the great architect, with medieval scriptures and the theologians like Thomas Aquinas and John Calvin incorporating this concept in their works. However, Aquinas's depiction of God is not entirely neutral, portraying him as the highest good with an anthropomorphic form in Jesus Christ. Martinism, Another spiritual movement also recognizes the concept of the great architect of the universe. Martinists consider the invocation of this entity possible, though traditional worship is primarily directed towards God. This wide-ranging exploration of the grand architect of the cosmos in various traditions, from Freemasonry and Rosicrucianism to Hindu mythology and Christian theology, underscores its role as a unifying symbol. It serves as a bridge across different faiths and belief systems, offering a shared symbolic reverence to the divine. The concept stands as a testament to humanity's ongoing quest to understand and venerate the creative force behind the universe. 
highlighting the diverse ways in which the divine is perceived and celebrated across cultures and spiritual paths. Martinism's practice of invocation extends beyond the divine, encompassing angels and demons, James Hopwood. Jeans, in his scientific exploration, views the great architect of the universe as a metaphor for the cosmos's mathematical framework, suggesting a universe designed by a mathematician. Jinaraja Dasa supports this, noting a geometric basis in the universe's structure. In Platonism and Neoplatonism, the Demiurge is a key concept for understanding the material world's formation and maintenance. Plato describes the Demiurge in Timaeus as a benevolent entity, shaping the physical universe, striving to create a world teeming with life and lesser gods. Middle Platonism and Neoplatonism further develop this idea, depicting the Demiurge as a secondary divine entity encompassing both the intelligible and sensible worlds. Plotinus, a Neoplatonist, views the Demiurge as an uncreated secondary cause integral to human consciousness and understanding of Platonic realism. He aligns the Demiurge with Zeus and the Greek pantheon, emphasizing the relationship between the One, or the Monad, and the Demiurge. Gnosticism presents a stark contrast between a transcendent supreme being and a lower creator, often identified with the Demiurge. Various Gnostic schools depict the Demiurge as either fundamentally opposed to the supreme being's intentions, creating a world to trap dive in fragments, or as inadvertently flowered, attempting to mirror the divine realm. This results in a flowered creation, with the Demiurge serving as a solution to the problem of evil. Angels in Gnosticism play a multifaceted role. Some early Gnostic sects attribute creation to angels, with a chief angel often identified as the god of the Jews. Mystical traditions like the Archontic, Cain and Ophite systems credit a group of seven archons led by Yaldabaoth with creation. Yaldabaoth, depicted as envious of humanity and attempting to limit human knowledge, is prophesied to return all light to the Pleroma at the end of time, while he and the material world face the abyss. The etymology of Yaldabaoth has been debated, with earlier theories linking it to an Aramaic term for chaos debunked. The Demiurge is also known as Samael, translating to blind god, and Sakash, meaning fool. Ariel, the Leon of God, is another name associated with the Demiurgian Gnostic texts. Marion of Chios distinguishes between the Demiurge, the god of this world, and a higher, loving god of the New Testament, reflecting the intricate and varied perspectives within Gnostic and Platonic traditions on the nature of creation and the divine. Christ is seen as the Son of God, with believers in Christ entering God's kingdom and non-believers remaining under the dominion of the Demiurge. In the Valentinian system, the term Demiurgos holds unique significance, aligning with various figures in Gnostic thought. Valentinianism posits that from Sophia or lower wisdom, three substances emerged, spiritual, animal, and material. The Demiurge, belonging to the animal category and a distant emanation from the Supreme God, creates the world from chaos, leading to a near-perfect universe to its own astonishment. People are classified as either material or spiritual, with their fates diverging. The material will be destroyed, while the spiritual will inhabit an intermediate realm. Opinions within Gnostic sects vary regarding the relationship between the devil and the Demiurge. Some see the Demiurge as the creator of spiritual beings, including the devil, who acknowledges a higher spiritual realm unknown to the Demiurge. Heraklion, a Valentinian interpreter, viewed the devil as the embodiment of evil matter. Catharism, a Christian dualist movement active in medieval Europe, inherited its concept of Satan from Gnosticism. 
the Cathars believe the world's creator, Satanael, falsely claimed to be God. Cathar cosmology presented a dualistic view with two opposed deities, a benevolent god and an evil god, responsible for creating matter and the physical world. Within Catharism, interpretations of Satan ranged from being a servant of the true God to a figure of equal power. The concept of the great architect of the universe, explored in various spiritual, philosophical and religious traditions represents the divine or supreme being. Used predominantly in Freemasonry as a neutral and inclusive symbol, it also finds mention in Rosicrucianism, Christian theology, Gnosticism and Hindu mythology, each offering unique interpretations. In Gnosticism, the Great Architect is synonymous with the Demiurge, portrayed diversely from malevolent to ignorant or misguided. In contrast, Platonic and Neoplatonic philosophies view the Demiurge more neutrally as a craftsman of the perceivable world. The metaphor of the Great Architect symbolizes divine potential, exemplified in figures like Lord Vishwakarma in Hindu mythology and in Christian teachings by Thomas Aquinas. The role of the Demiurge varies across different systems, highlighting the concept's complexity and significance in understanding the relationship between the spiritual and the material. As we conclude our exploration of the Grand Architect of the Cosmos, we are reminded of the profound depth and breadth this concept holds across various spiritual, philosophical and religious traditions. It's fascinating to see how this idea, representing the Divine or Supreme Being, bridges diverse belief systems, from Freemasonry's inclusive symbolism to the intricate teachings of Rosicrucianism, Christian theology, Gnosticism, and Hindu mythology. In Gnosticism, the Grand Architect parallels the Demiurge, an entity whose interpretations vary from being a malevolent creator to an uninformed or misguided figure. This contrasts with the more neutral view in Platonic and Neoplatonic philosophies, where the Demiurge is seen as a benign craftsman of the perceivable world. Such diversity in understanding underscores the concept's complexity and its pivotal role in delineating the relationship between the spiritual and the material realms. We've seen how this metaphor extends beyond religious constructs, symbolizing the divine potential within us all, and how it's exemplified in various cultures, particularly in Hindu mythology, with figures like Lord Vishwakarma, and in Christian teachings through the insights of Thomas Aquinas. But our journey doesn't end here. If you're intrigued by the depths of ancient wisdom and esoteric knowledge, don't miss our latest video that talks about the sacred meaning of a spiritual principle you probably have never heard of.